Hello there, grade 11 students. Welcome back to another series, another exciting lesson about Earth and Life Sciences intended for grade 11. I'm sure you are all excited and so do I, so let's move on. All right, so we are in our lesson three. Okay, so this time we will talk about minerals. Okay. In our previous lesson, we learned about the four subsystems of the Earth. The natural balance that exists among the four subsystems allows living things to survive, which continue to interact among each other and with the environment. A lot of important raw materials are found in the environment some of which are mineral-based. In this lesson, you are to identify the examples of minerals, explain the different characteristics of minerals, differentiate minerals based on their properties, and develop awareness on the importance of minerals around us. So let's get started. A mineral is defined as a naturally occurring, usually inorganic solid, with distinct chemical composition and an orderly crystalline structure. In order to test whether a sample of matter is a mineral, scientists need to assess the sample according to the aforementioned characteristics. A silicate mineral contains silicon and oxygen and may consist of a metal. Examples are feldspar, orthoclase, and plagioclase. A non-silicate mineral is one that does not contain silicon and oxygen, examples of which are gypsum, galena, and corundum. Every mineral is recognized according to its properties that exist as a result of its chemical composition. Such properties may be identified subjectively or objectively, such as by running a test. The following are the properties of minerals. Color, luster, streak, cleavage and fracture, density, hardness, reaction with acids, fluorescence, and phosphorescence. Let's start with color. The property of mineral that can easily be observed is its color. In our previous science lessons, we learned that color is the result of the reflection of visible light. Color is a useful property of minerals. Corundum, a colorless mineral, is composed of aluminum and oxygen atoms. Corundum that contains traces of chromium forms a red gem called ruby. Another type of corundum is sapphire, a blue colored gem as a result of traces of iron and titanium. However, color alone may not be sufficient enough in identifying minerals since some minerals may have almost the same color though they differ in their chemical structures. Second property of mineral is the luster. The ability of a mineral to reflect light from its surface is called luster. Metallic minerals have metallic luster. This type of luster is manifested by the way polished metals reflect light, while non-metallic minerals have non-metallic luster. Examples of metallic luster are galena, pyrite, and graphite. Non-metallic luster is classified into four types of luster, which are glassy luster, like quartz, waxy luster, like chalcedony, pearly luster, like mica, and brilliant luster, like diamond. 
The third property of mineral is streak. Streak refers to the color of mineral in powdered form. The color of mineral's powdered form may differ from its color in solid form. A mineral is rubbed against an unglazed ceramic tile to observe its streak. Metallic minerals have streaks that are dark in color. For example, the streak of a gold-colored pyrite is black in color. On the other hand, the streak of non-metallic minerals is generally light in color. Let's move on to the fourth property of mineral, the cleavage and fracture. Cleavage refers to the ability of a mineral to split along a weak plane forming flat surface. Calcite is an example of mineral that has cleavage in three directions. On the other hand, fracture refers to the capacity of a certain mineral to break along curved surfaces. Quartz is an example of mineral that has fracture. The fifth property is the density. Density is defined as the compactness of a sample of matter. It is calculated as mass divided by volume. Different samples of mineral of the same size differ in mass because of the different elements that make up such minerals. Minerals containing heavy metals like uranium, lead, silver, and gold have densities that range from 7 to 20 gram per cubic centimeters. The periodic table of elements shows that each element has a unique density. The sixth property is hardness. The tendency of a mineral to resist abrasion or scratching is termed as hardness. The Moss scale of hardness shows the arrangement of minerals from the softest or the talc to the hardest or the diamond. Hardness is the result of intermolecular bonding. The Moss scale of mineral hardness arranges minerals according to their scratch resistance. From the softest to the hardest mineral, the sequence of the Moss scale is as follows. Talc, gypsum, calcite, fluorite, apatite, feldspar, quartz, topaz, corundum, and diamond. Talc is the softest mineral, while diamond is the hardest. The seventh property of mineral is the reaction with acids. Minerals that contain carbonate react with acid. For example, a sample of calcite reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid or HCl. Moving on, we have the eighth property of mineral. Fluorescence. The ability of minerals to glow when bombarded with ultraviolet light is called fluorescence. In this condition, minerals may not glow under ordinary light. This is because such minerals are selective of the wavelength of light that causes it to glow. Calcite possesses this property. The last and the ninth property of mineral is the phosphorescence. Some minerals would continue to glow even after a source of ultraviolet light has been turned off. This ability is called phosphorescence. The ore of lithium possesses this characteristic. Yes, we are done with the lesson three. Congratulations and Thank you for listening. See you again next time. Keep safe by staying at home. You can do the activities that follow. Thank you and God bless you.